are joined by Wendy Bacon, who also happens to work at the EMBL EBI in the training team as a scientific training officer. Thank you, Ajay. Uh, right, so a little bit of background on the point of this webinar. So I used to be a postdoc at the University of Cambridge doing single cell analysis, and I was very much a wet lab person. And I was quite lucky that as part of our project, we got to work with a bioinformatician, a fantastic bioinformatician, Russell Hamilton, who was also very kind and sort of walking me through how to do analysis and sort of dragging me through command line in R. And so when I started here as a scientific training officer, I was so excited to find out everything that they were doing with Galaxy, which essentially bridges the gap for scientists who are wet lab people or don't really know coding that well, but need to analyze their data. Uh, yeah, it, it was so exciting because I think one of the problems with single cell in particular is that it's so, they're so, it's a very steep learning curve because you have to learn both how to code with command line, with R or with Python. You have to learn what tools are out there because there is no brilliantly standardized, here's how you analyze your single cell data. And then you also have to learn the maths underpinning each of those techniques. And then on top of that, you have to learn about infrastructure. And that's so many different skill sets to put on one wet lab person a lot of the time. So Galaxy really helps bridge that gap. Uh, so I don't actually have a lot of slides. Uh, we're just going to go straight into showing you a little bit about how Galaxy works, maybe demystify it a little bit. Um, so there's many different Galaxy instances. I'm going to give you a link at the end to the public versions that you can access that have a lot, if not all, of the tools that I'm going to use today. Uh, in addition to loads that I won't, uh, but mostly I just wanted to take you around how Galaxy works and what it might look like for you. So yeah, this is an instance, it's, it's one that we use here at the EBI, the one that we used in our uh, training course last week, or a couple weeks ago, and so right, let's crack on. So different things that you can have, we have workflows, uh, and you can have data histories. Uh, and we'll go through those in a little bit of detail. But workflow, this is where you're chaining your tools together. So we're going to go through making a workflow in this tutorial. I will say the great thing about Galaxy is it does a great job of remembering everything that you do. Uh, so it's very important that you label things appropriately, but that's a topic for a different time. So we'll go with that, because we all like a bit of alliteration. So making a workflow. The first thing we're going to start with this one is we want to access some data. So if you're inputting your data, you go over to input uh, or get data, right? In this case, we're actually going to nick data from one of the, from the single cell expression atlas here at the EBI. So if I scroll down here, you have a variety of tools. These ones at the bottom are all single cell related. So there's about getting data, uh, depending on which pipeline you're going to use. We're going to use Scampy today, so that's Python. If you click on any one of these, you can see all the different tools associated with that pipeline. And there's loads for Scampy. Um, or maybe you're interested in Surat, the R-based version, uh, you can click on these as well. So we're going to start with getting data. So I'm going to go over to get data and then retrieving the data from the single cell expression atlas. So if I click on this, we're now starting to build our workflow. So at the top here, this is what this is essentially the output from this retrieval tool. So you're going to go into the single cell expression atlas and you're going to retrieve your matrix, which is your cells and your genes and the transcript levels across. You're going to get your genes table, your barcode table and your experimental design. So this is where we're talking about maybe disease or sex or individual, the sort of important things you need as associated with your data at the end. So the data I'm gonna get is going to be data I actually did during my postdoc because it was the first thing I did when I came here and saw the Galaxy pipeline is I'd slaved over this postdoc data to try and understand it and then I immediately plugged it through the tools they had in the workflow and was able to sort of redo what had taken me months and months and months to get my head around in about 20 minutes which was both exciting and a little bit soul crushing. Right, so the accession number is what you can find if you're looking at different data sets in the single cell expression atlas. And if you don't know what that is, there was a great webinar a couple of weeks ago on it. Uh, for our purposes, it's gonna hold the data that's important for us. So when you go over for, free, for each of the tools, you can get different parameters or different options. A lot of the time, especially if you're a wet lab person, you're just gonna leave it at the default setting, but there are important things. For instance, which experiment am I, am I accessing? So this is the accession number, which you can find at the single cell expression atlas. Uh, and then now I need to actually start analyzing my data. So this is going to pull my data across. And now we have to start doing the fun stuff. 
I'm not going to go into detail on what each of these steps do on the basis that this is quite a short webinar, uh, but there are some resources that you can access and I have a link to it at the end. So the first thing we need to do is we need to read this data in. So this is very similar to 10x data, it's actually drop seed data. And now we get to the ins and outs on how the galaxy works. So if we have our matrix over here, we need to link it to the next tool. And what's brilliant about this is you can have entire lectures and seminars on formats of data, and that can sometimes get a bit overwhelming. Galaxy's wonderfully user-friendly in this, in that if the arrow is green, you can link it and it's formatted correctly. So genes to my genes table, barcode to my barcode table, and then this is all my cell metadata. So in this case, it's disease and sex and individual, and I can link it across. All right, and this is the input on the top here, and then the output on the bottom. This is making me my Scampi object that I can then do the different analyses to. So we can start and now analyzing. I should also say there is, if you know, Scampi is getting a little bit long, I could be searching the toolboxes as well. Like I could go to filter cells and it would show me my Scampi, or sorry, that was search, but it would show me my Scampi filter cells. So there's a lot of back, ooh, I clicked filter genes while we're gonna do that in a second here. There's a lot of backgrounds in uh, sync cell data. So you have to filter out the background from yourself. So I can connect these. And then I can come over here and say, all right, well, I've picked my filter. In this case, it's gonna be the number of genes. And now I can pick the minimum value. So how many genes make a cell? So do I need 300 genes to define it as a cell? Or maybe I need 500 genes? Or you know, what's background versus what's important information? There are a number of ways of looking at this. So we have a number of different plotting functions that you can play around with. Uh, so I think I have an example over here. Yeah, so for instance, you can look at the number of genes you have per cell and you can plot different scatter plots or different violin plots to help you justify decisions that you make. Saying that, there can be a lot of subjectivity in some of the best advices. You should try different things. And if your output is consistent, then you can trust it. And this is where I think Galaxy is particularly cool because sometimes if you're doing that with code, you end up generating an image, maybe you save it in a folder, maybe you generate something on another day, and how did that dis differ from that thing you generated three weeks ago? So Galaxy, you can chain it together. So for instance, I could say, all right, well, I wanna know if my data, if I set my lower filter value at 300, is the same as my data if I set it at 500. And you can run it all at the same time and then compare the outputs. Uh, so those are fun things you can do. We're not gonna do it right now because it's a bit much for a little tutorial. So we're going to filter our cells. We're now going to filter our genes. If a gene shows up once in your entire data set, it's probably not that informative. Uh, so we should have a minimum value there, maybe I don't know, three. Uh, and then we'll just carry on with the pipeline. So we can normalize our data. Again, chain arrow across. Um, and then we can find a variable gene. So a lot of genes aren't doing too much. We want to find the ones that are causing a difference between cells and focus our analysis on that. Uh, because this data is highly dimensional. There's a lot of genes and a lot of cells, and to be able to visualize and understand that, you need to reduce that dimensionality. So we can then run our principal component analysis. Um, there's a number of different ways of regressing out uh, different variables that you can include as well. Uh, we can, and yes, once we have our PCAs, we can start to generate our uh, graph. So this is where we're starting to look at what our cluster is going to be. So we plot our graph, and then we find our clusters based off of the uh, results of that graph. And now we can do the best bit of all of the single cell analysis where we start to plot things. So we're gonna plot a TISNI. Ah, and this is a great example of some of the ways that you get data out of this. So you'll see there's input on the top, output on the bottom. So in this case, we have the output of the object that you can analyze, and you also have a cluster table. So this will give you a table of TSD, which you can open in Excel or Notepad, uh, and it will tell you information about each row in your data set. So it's something you can inspect along the way as well, uh, whereas inspecting your end data is a lot less straightforward. So we have our run TISNI. We can then ooh, find markers. All right. Uh, and these fine markers, again, is going to give you a table of your genes in addition to this uh, and data with the marker and gene information in it. Uh, we can then carry on and let's run a UMAP. because everyone's quite excited about making UMAPs nowadays, Chisney's slowly not being appreciated. Uh, and then 
there are, you can do a number of plotting functions in here where you'll make these you know, R or publication ready images, depending on how you set it up. In this case, let's say we're a little bit earlier on in our data analysis. We want to look at our data, examine it, ask questions about it. So there's actually a direct link into a UCSC browser. However, this is going to give us a good example on how to use Galaxy. So if I'm trying to link from this tool over to the UCSC browser, it's come up orange. I can't link it. So that data isn't in the right format. So let me come over here and look at this UCSC browser. Ah, so it gives me a toggle over here of choose the format of your expression data. All right, well, it's clearly not that format. Ah, so it must be my scampy and data format. So if I switch the formats, I can now link to my UCSC cell browser. All right, very important, save your workflows. I've lost a lot in my life, don't do that. Uh, and then let's see if it runs. So you can hit go. Send results to a new history. Every time you do your analysis, it'll either stay in the same history or it'll go to a new one. And what's nice is each of those uh, objects, each of those charts, it'll actually stay within your history so you can go back and access it. You know, how did I analyze this data two months ago? You could go and see each step of the way. Um, so we'll name this my new history, send results to new history, run workflow. And then I'll switch to that history now. So now all those steps that I've just set up to run are now running over here. So gray means they haven't yet gone yet. And then depending on which, um, depending on which Galaxy instance you're using or how uh, much data is being thrown at at any given time, this can be variable. So luckily these are running straight away. So orange is running. Uh, and you just leave that be and go have some coffee. So let's look at, this is one I ran earlier. So it's the same setup of everything. Uh, and we can look at the history. So it should be, oh, I need to switch my histories. So that's my result. Yeah, we can go to that. So I can come over here and I say, as, as things run, so those are the same first four steps, the steps will turn green. And then at the end, I want to look at the, I want to look at the chart, I want to look at the pretty clusters. So I come over here to the UCSC cell browser. And if you click on any step, you can get information on it. So you can download the raw data, you can run this job again. In this case, I want to view my data. And I'll come over here. And I now have my clusters. And so this is great for examining your data when you're trying to figure out what, I guess, what questions to ask or, or you know, to get a sense of what's going on. So if I click on simple characteristic disease, it's now going to color these cells by whether they came from our model of fetal growth restriction or normal. And this is giving you your overall frequency. So we had far more normal cells than fetal growth restriction. Maybe I'm interested in a specific area. So I could come over here and say, ah, cluster six looks a little bit odd, it doesn't look very even. And so I can draw my little loop around it and it will tell me, ah, so 90% of those cells were normal and 9% were growth restricted. So there might be a phenotype going on there. Or maybe these cells as well look a little bit asymmetric. Uh, so you can analyze your data that way. You can look for individual effects. So this will color them each by uh, their individual. You can look for essentially whatever metadata you include, you can then examine uh, using the UCSC browser. And then, of course, the fun bit is you can search for your favorite gene. So we're going to go with GAP-DH. Uh, and now it's colored the cells by their expression of GAP-DH. Um, and then you can compare selected versus others. And you can play around with this. Maybe we want to look at the UMAP instead of the TISNI uh, and, and learn from your data. So that was sort of a rapid fire cluster or hit and go to clusters. We can then have a look at the one that we did live. So it's now hit the filter gene stage, um, but it's clearly done these steps all right. And then the other thing that I really want to show you about Galaxy is I really love how it troubleshoots. It takes out a lot of the pain I find when I do, when I do more code-based troubleshooting. So this is an example of something's gone a bit wrong. So if it goes wrong, it very helpfully turns red, and everything that depends on that step is going to be this light blue with a pause button. So an error occurred in my, oh, I've done SIRET this time, in my SIRET filter cells step. So I want to learn more about this error. So if I click view or report on this error, it's going to give me some details. So in this case, it says 
ah, n change is not a valid metadata variable for this object, so it didn't work. So, hmm, what does that mean? Let's run this job again. Um, ah, yes, newer versions, depending on as things get updated, there's this button up here so you can change to different versions. Um, let's see, ah, so name a parameter to filter on. It said n genes doesn't exist, so let's see, what does exist? Ah, so maybe we'll do n count RNA instead, and now we'll be able to filter on it. Now, very important button here that I often missed when I first started using Galaxy, resume dependencies from this job. All right? If I hit go now, it's only going to redo this, and the rest of these things are going to stay paused. So if you click yes, however, uh, it is going to redo that step, uh, and it's going to kick off all the steps that were halted because of it, uh, which is a really nice way of troubleshooting your data. So I think that was all I wanted to show for this. Uh, the last bit of information I'm going to leave you guys with are these resource links. Uh, so we did a course on this a couple of weeks ago, and this is a GitHub page with some information on how you can install these tools. If you're using whatever Galaxy instance you're using, if you want access to these tools, they're all there, open access for people to use. Uh, the great one where people working on single cell have put their tools together is this human cell atlas publicly available uh, site which also has a number of tutorials as well and then this is the link to our course materials from the course we ran a couple of weeks ago where we were showing participants how to use this galaxy pipeline and if you prefer to learn it face to face you can apply to our may course for next year uh, so with that i think i'll take some questions yes yeah, so i one of the questions is many cases have data that's one file rather than the matrix plus gene plus barcode. So this is particularly well set up for the output of CellRager, for instance, for 10x data, or what you can get from either the Human Cell Atlas or the Single Cell Expression Atlas. But there are tools and tutorials on how to use just raw FASTQ files and how to turn those into matrices and then do the downstream analysis. Uh, and in fact, on the course materials, one of the uh, workflows that we provide uh, is how to how to go from FASTQ to data matrix. So that is applicable there. Oh, excellent question. After certain steps, is it possible to bring data out? Like if you want to an analyze it on another platform? Yes. And that is another thing that I actually did when I first started testing this was I kept I ran Surat and at each step I would take the data out into R and see if I was getting the same, and, you know, compare it and muck about with it in R. So you can definitely do that. So if we come over here, each of these sort of view data, a lot of the time it will automatically download that object. So if I'm, oh, I could go to my R1, for instance. Oh, which one is R? This guy. Uh, so I could go to my R1, for instance, and if I uh, download this, it's going to be in my R data format. So yes, you can absolutely take it out at each step.